What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we have the Denago City One 500 watt rear hub with a 48 volt 13.6 amp hour battery I believe. Uh, you know what it is. We are going to add a second battery with the Electric All Wheel dual battery discharge balance kit. This bike does take some special connections and they are custom and available in our shop where we are going to install a 40 amp balancer with the custom cables fit for the Denago City One. We have these ends on them which we have just gotten in stock. We're pretty proud of this. We're going to do an external install just to demonstrate what the possibilities are and I think we're going to do a down tube strap battery over the top of the factory battery. Keep in mind None of the batteries that we recommend are required. You just need to make sure that you have a 48 volt battery to match the system specs and you've got your cables run where you can reach the mounting place of the battery. We do have our handy 48 volt 10 amp hour battery that we recommend across the board and we could strap it right here on the rear rack. And then we are going to run a mount just for demo where we strap that battery here just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, we'll probably just position mount it because the concept is the same. Make the plug available and then just plug your battery in. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. We will perform some range calculations at the end of the video. Check the description below the video for links to all the products. And check out electricallwheel.com if you have a chance. Here we go. So first thing, I'm gonna take out this battery. All right, my next move is to remove these screws for this plate. And there's three screws, one here, one right here, and then one inside here. There's a little opening across the top. It's skipping, so I'm just, oh, and it actually came out with a screwdriver, so good. There it is. Looks like a wood screw. There's this one. They are different, so keep that in mind. I'm going to just lift it out. There we go. And then it plugs in pretty shallow right at the opening, but this is it. You can see it off the plate. These are the connectors for it. This is your battery plate connector, two wires, so we know how that's plugging in. The controller is actually inside, and it is a 21 amp current limit, so we're going to be using a 40 amp balancer on this bike. Um, underneath, there is a screw right here that will loosen the controller. We might go ahead and take that loose. But one thing to consider when you do this is you've got to undo your motor cable so you don't pull that. So undo your motor cable right here at this connection, undo your zip ties, and then unscrew this one screw for the controller right in there. And it's right here. Hex, hex head screw. And do that. And then, like I said, remember to undo your motor. And then you'll see that you can get a hold of the controller. I'm just going to push through for some slack. Try. And take this head and then push it through the cable opening towards the bottom, which you're just going to have to trust me that it's there. There it is. That's the first one. Now what we're going to do is just take and plug in the respective ends. Match up the little arrows there on the face here. 
That's one of our new cables. And then this one, what we're going to connect the plate to. There we go. And I'll remove that slack. Now we're just going to go ahead try and bring our controller back down into the housing. Now keep in mind inside here the cables were swept to the sides of the controller so when you do this you're going to need to push them back out when you do your install. So right there, the, you want the cables on the outside of this so when I put the screw back in, it seats well. I'm going to take my screw, and then I'm putting the screw back in. You'll see it start popping out right here on the controller. Perfect. There's that. We got our plate. We'll go ahead and put this back on. And there's the screw with the pointy end is on the outside. So before I move on, I'm just going to plug in my motor cable. And it has arrows on the face of it, so keep that in mind. And then we have our two wires coming out. So we're going to bring them around and then just shove them through this little middle opening right behind the seat post. And up they come. There we go. And then I'm going to take my 40 amp balancer. And then from here, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in what works. There's really no way to mess this up. So just plug in the way it works. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and reverse these so the second battery will be on the outside. Perfect. The reality of this is you guys need to weather protect these and get them encased if you're doing any of that kind of extreme riding. And then that way you can know that you've got at least some protection against well, water intrusion into your components. These are not waterproof. So you must take the proper precautions. I'm going to leave this one out and then just kind of I'm going to fish it through my cabling here so I can get a good connect when I wrap it around the seat post. I'm going to do and you'll want to take the extra steps and precautions this video is so you can see the wiring dynamic and what's going on and know where to get the right hookups for your bike i'm probably going to need to double this up take two of these things so i can get around the balancer there we go. here. Make sure it's around the body. There we go. I'm going to clip that. Clip that and clip the last one around the edge. 
for this setup, I'm just going to set this right here for a moment. So we're just doing the XT60 to XT60 extension cables of the pair. You only need one. You're just trying to get length back to your battery. So this is our second battery hookup right here. We'll go ahead and plug that in. And then we'll bring it back here to the battery itself. And now we're going to look for power on the display. Perfect. Now this bike has settings where the rear wheel um, must be in motion before any of the uh, accoutrement will engage. So it has to be spinning. The way I've been testing this is by lifting and then running the spin and then you'll see that the and here hopefully that the motor takes off and then while it's moving i'll be able to press the throttle and it'll go i just don't want to mess up the settings that the owner has going on so let me go ahead and get this strapped down really quick perfect i just don't want it to fall when i lift all right here we go Batteries in. We have power on the display. I told you about the setting. So let me lift this, get this wheel going, and then you can actually hear it take off. And then this is throttle. We know that's working. So we have a good install. And go ahead and take the factory battery, plug it back in, and then remove this. What we're looking for is no power loss to the display. Perfect. The second battery is not connected. And then go ahead and get this spinning. And then that is factory battery. We know that. Here we go. And get these zip tied off on the cable. Perfect. We do have a setup that we like using. And what these are are two bike case. I don't know if you can read that. Bike case bottle cage straps. Longer straps, you may have to get them from the Bike Case website if they're not available through Amazon. They are longer straps that will go around a larger body, and then they have these nice grippy ends on them. And then when you mount them to the mount for the battery, you need to make sure that you change the screw heads on here so that they move over. The battery can move over the screw heads when you go to put it in. We actually use the factory uh, hex head which is a little bit deeper uh, for the bottom mount and it's the only screw that's connected you saw that when I demonstrated this but it keeps it stable when it's on there and the reason we like this is because it's a quick and easy install go ahead and come around here tighten down that velcro strap There's that. And then this is a high long 15 amp hour battery that we like using. And once we have the weight on there, we like to come back and give the straps one more grab so that it doesn't slip. Nice and tight. And then you can see I can actually lift the bike from the battery. We like that. We've done this install on a lot of them, and it makes it possible to add a second battery on the down tube and then save your rack space. From there, you would just plug in where the balancer is, and for this kind of install, you don't need the extension kit. And we like to use home theater um, cable straps with a sticky side. They're a clear version that will hold this down right here on the body. It's nice and flat right here, so it'll work perfect. And that's it. This battery is not in use, but you could have a third and just unplug and plug in or actually put in a second balancer to do a third battery installation. And there you go. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed a second 48 volt battery on this Denago City One e-bike. This is a great commuter e-bike with some swept back handlebars, seven speed. Uh, gear shift on the right-hand side, zoom hydraulic brakes, left-hand thumb throttle, 
left hand display controls the keypads on the left with a nice big display right down the middle and adjustable headset we like this bike and i believe at the sale it was a price point of 999 dollars, so a really good deal so let's do the range calculations for this bike it's 13.6 plus 15 equals 28.6 times 48 1,372.8 divided by 25 equals 54.9 miles. That is a nice clip for this bike. 54.9 miles is your range at 20 miles an hour throttle only, utilizing the mica toll constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden. Pretty easy install. We anticipate 20 to 40 minutes for this install. And we're using a 40 amp balancer because the current limit on the controller is 21 amps. Make sure to match your battery. You are not obligated to this battery or the 48 volt 10 amp hour battery, 10 amp hour battery that we used earlier. Just make sure you match the system specs of 48 volts. You have the XT60 connection. You have the length to get to the battery's mounting location and the BMS matches and will not succumb to the 21 amp current limit. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida Facebook group. Get in that group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. We'll talk to you next time.